Yesterday afternoon, Xiaomi's automotive technology launch event finally made its debut. Coupled with the ongoing Huawei theft case, Xiaomi's founder Lei Jun and Xiaomi have rapidly become the hot topic of discussion throughout China. Have you noticed? Both Xiaomi and Huawei are renowned Chinese high-tech companies, with Huawei firmly establishing itself as a benchmark for high-end products. However, despite Xiaomi's excellence, its high-end image has struggled to solidify, leading to substantial setbacks in its plans to enter the high-end market. So, the question arises, why does Xiaomi face such challenges in the high-end domain while Huawei is constrained by sanctions? What are the key differences between Xiaomi and Huawei? In today's video, I'd like to use smartphones as an example to discuss and share insights on this topic. The three key differences between Xiaomi and Huawei, the first gap, research and development, R&D, and more R&D, the fundamental difference between Huawei and other domestic smartphone manufacturers is crystal clear, self-developed chips. Huawei's self-developed Kirin chips, in terms of performance and design, even surpass Qualcomm and Samsung's Exynos series chips. This has made Huawei a significant threat to Samsung in the high-end smartphone market. The primary difference between Xiaomi and Huawei lies in technological research and development. In essence, Xiaomi struggles to pose a real threat to Samsung in the high-end market due to a lack of a technology gene. Some may wonder, Xiaomi has always used the latest flagship chips from Qualcomm, and its configurations are on par with flagship models from Huawei and Samsung. Logically, there should be no technological gap. So, why is there such a significant difference in market performance between Xiaomi and the other two? The apparent chip issue actually represents a difference in technological capabilities. Samsung and Xiaomi basically use the same Qualcomm flagship chips in high-end models. However, due to differences in technological capabilities, Samsung has a deeper understanding of the chip, more comprehensive mastery of chip technology, and thus, a significant advantage in hardware optimization compared to Xiaomi. Xiaomi's more significant technological flaw compared to Huawei is the lack of emphasis on independent research and development. Since the launch of its first smartphone in 2011, Xiaomi has been deeply tied to Qualcomm and has focused more on tapping into the capabilities of the industry supply chain than on independent R&D. While this decision is understandable in today's highly globalized smartphone industry, Xiaomi's excessive reliance on Qualcomm determines its inability to break through Qualcomm's technological dominance. The issue is that Qualcomm is just a chip company. Although it designs smartphone chips, its focus on application scenarios may not be as thorough as smartphone manufacturers that directly face users. From this perspective, we can see why Huawei, Samsung, and Apple stand at the industry's pinnacle. They can directly design and optimize chips based on user feedback, thus building their own product characteristics. Other manufacturers, however, have to rely on Qualcomm for chip design and optimization. And because the chips are aimed at all manufacturers, inevitable compromises and limitations arise. Moreover, even if all manufacturers use the same Qualcomm chip, those with chip design experience clearly understand hardware optimization and integration better. In this regard, Xiaomi's efforts are evidently insufficient. The second gap, strategic positioning confusion, what has been Xiaomi's winning strategy over the years? I believe many can guess, it's cost reduction. I remember Xiaomi used to have a slogan called Ultimate Cost Effectiveness. What did it achieve? It lowered the cost of a smartphone with similar configurations. Xiaomi took this even further, voluntarily compressing its profit margins and pushing prices down to 1,900 yuan. Now, let's calculate the overall profit margin on our OWN.AN increase in sales will inevitably affect market share. 
increasing Xiaomi's influence in the supply chain and maintaining its advantage in cost control. Moreover, cost effectiveness reduces the pressure on Xiaomi from a marketing perspective. In other words, for the same amount of money spent on marketing, Xiaomi is likely to sell more phones. As Xiaomi's cost effectiveness strategy becomes increasingly narrow, the fundamental reason lies in losing control over the supply chain. Supply chain manufacturers tend to become more transparent in terms of pricing, while market competition intensifies. With the rise of Huawei, the smartphone market underwent changes, leading to a clearer division between high, medium, and low end smartphones. By entering markets like India and other developing countries, Xiaomi once again increased its product scale, allowing it to maintain its cost effectiveness strategy for a longer period. However, as China, an early entrant into the smartphone market, experiences intensified competition on all fronts, transparency is evident in all aspects of competition, similar hardware channels, identical prices, equal sales costs similar marketing methods, etc. Aside from cost proximity, other manufacturers, vying for market share and gradually enhancing their supply chain management capabilities, are also reducing prices. In simple terms, industry competition intensifies, and Xiaomi gradually loses its cost-effectiveness advantage. At this point, Huawei emerges with its powerful weapon of self-developed technology. Why is self-developed technology so powerful? Because it doesn't engage in a price war on the cost end with other manufacturers. Instead, it focuses on premium capabilities. In other words, Huawei's positioning has always been centered around premium pricing. The domestic market quickly became Huawei's stronghold, and this advantage proved universally applicable overseas. Huawei's rapid development even led it to surpass Apple in global market share. Crucially, Huawei not only achieved high sales but also substantial profits. This is mainly because Huawei entered the most profitable segment, high-end smartphones. In reality, the high-end smartphone sector has only three and a half major players, Apple, Samsung, Huawei, and Qualcomm, counting as half. They collectively claim the vast majority of profits in the smartphone industry. What about Xiaomi? Xiaomi's positioning has become lost. It needs the label of cost effectiveness to maintain sales growth, but the increasing cost also means that the development space for the cost effectiveness strategy is narrowing. Even if the cost effectiveness strategy still works in markets like India, it is destined to become increasingly limited. In other words, cost effectiveness will sooner or later become an empty phrase. The third gap, lack of social responsibility. When a company is small, its social responsibility may involve providing employment opportunities and contributing to taxes. However, as the company grows, its social responsibility will inevitably increase. In addition to creating jobs and contributing to taxes, it must also consider the positive impact it can have on the industry and the long-term development of the country. I often see people online saying that Huawei engages in patriotic marketing. I remember Xiaomi proposed the slogan the rise of domestic products earlier than Huawei. Why is it that only Huawei is accused of patriotic marketing? I believe it's because only Huawei is truly recognized by patriotic individuals and has gained the maximum dividends in the online patriotic wave. The question these people should consider is, why has only Huawei succeeded in patriotic marketing? I want to say it's not because the common people are easily deceived, but because justice is apparent to all. While developing itself, Huawei has indeed driven the development of China's communication industry and achieved an international leading position in this field through self-developed technology. Setting aside the benefits it brings to the national communication industry, it has to some extent enhanced the national pride of the Chinese people and had an overall impact on the country's technological rise. 
For the nation and the people, Huawei has demonstrated its sense of social responsibility. As a result, the company naturally receives dual support from both the country and the people. This is actually a very simple logic, therefore, despite social responsibility sounding like a term with little substance, it is deeply connected to the decision-making of a company, the sales of its products, and the formulation of its marketing strategies. This is similar to the term high-end smartphones. What does high-end mean? It doesn't represent high prices or good configurations, these are just accompanying attributes of high-end devices. In my view, high-end is a subjective feeling, outstanding performance, comfortable experience, universally recognized brand value, and a prestigious feeling when used. The essence of high-end is having both substance and style. Xiaomi, at best, has only achieved the substance part. Undoubtedly, companies with a stronger sense of social responsibility receive higher recognition and have a better public image. In conclusion, I want to clarify that I am not denigrating Xiaomi. Objectively speaking, Xiaomi is an excellent technology company, and I have always believed that it played a pioneering role in the development of smartphones in China, making China one of the biggest beneficiaries in this industry. Even Huawei, in the field of smartphones, should address Xiaomi as a senior, however. Xiaomi's path dependence and subsequent strategic positioning confusion have led to its decline in the latter half of the smartphone game. It failed to become a truly innovative intelligent hardware company and instead became a general player highly dependent on industrial chain capabilities. Meanwhile, it expanded its business into multiple consumer product areas, transforming into a technology company primarily focused on marketing and exterior design. Design